What an invitation. The earth is filled with his glory. As we look outside, as we look around our world, there are challenges, but it's filled with his glory. And it's that God who's worthy of our praise and our worship that we gather around today. Welcome as we gather as a church in many places. Perhaps you have people in your home today who you're gathering with as, as in fellowship and in worship of our God, or perhaps you're on your own. Wherever we are, we are connected as his people. We're here to open our hearts, to lay down our burdens and uh, lift up his name. So let's do that through song. Lord, I lift your name on high. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good and faithful. We lift your name on high for all that you've done, that you came from heaven to earth, you showed us the way, that you gave your life and that you rose from the dead. We thank you for those powerful promises. We thank you that the earth is filled with your glory in the, in the green and the sunshine and the rain and the flowers that bloom. We thank you that your presence is there if we only look for it. We lament that in this time there are things that we're restricted in doing. We can't do all and have all the freedoms that we hope for. But we thank you that you're with us in and through our struggles. And as we come to you this morning, we confess our failings and that we have not always looked to you. We confess the things on our hearts that are sin. Bring them to mind, Jesus, as we offer them to you. Forgive us. We thank you that you take those sins and by your grace and by your blood, we are washed clean. We offer ourselves to you afresh this morning to worship, to offer our all. Amen. A few notices and uh, announcements in the life of our church are coming up, as well as uh, sharing in celebration of our birthdays. To subscribe to our newsletter, Contact us, find our previous online service and more. Head to our website, uchunga.ucasa.org.au Thank you to those who have set up regular electronic giving for your weekly tithes and offerings. You can find our account details by clicking the giving button or on the giving section of the church website. If you are not sharing this morning with others in your home, 
Join us after the service to connect over Zoom. Use a link from the email sent this week or it will also be posted in a live chat. Did you know that if you have a specific prayer request, you can click the button at the bottom of the Church Online window? This will open up a private chat box with me and you can pass on a prayer request here that won't be visible to everyone. You can also email us with prayer needs and these will pass on to our prayer team or a wider group via email. Good morning, Church. Um, I'd like to bring to your attention uh, a letter or email which Matt has um, prepared and has forwarded to you in the last couple of days in regard to our services over the next uh, few weeks uh, leading into August. Um, the Church Council have decided that we are going to continue with the online service format, um, but we would also um, offer um, the use of One Dean on Sunday mornings as a place where those that wish to worship together and will watch the online service together, um, that that can be done in One Dean on, uh, on Sunday mornings at, uh, at 10 o'clock. So um, this would enable you to um, join with others to worship, but it would still be in the format of watching uh, our online service. Um, the reason why we are using One Dean rather than the church is because the cleaning requirements uh, are unworkable uh, in the church building. Um, so um, One Dean is a much simpler uh, environment. And uh, if you look at Matt's letter, letter, which I encourage you to read closely, it will give you all the details of when uh, this is going to start and, uh, and how it's going to work. Um, so please read that carefully uh, and make your decision. We still encourage those uh, to watch our online services together in small groups um, and uh, join with friends or, or others in your own home. Um, because of the medical advice uh, which we have received, which still is to be very cautious at this point, rather than, uh, than try and get services back as they used to be. So thank you very much for your understanding of where we're at. Um, we are all keen to uh, return, but we are very uh, conscious that we want to do it in the right way. Thank you. Hi everyone, Rachel Stevens here from Achunga Primary School. I just wanted to do a quick video to say hi and that um, I really do appreciate the support you guys continue to give, even though uh, we can't see each other in person. Matt and Michelle have checked in a couple of times, but I really want to say a big thank you because support from all of you guys and our Interchurch Council has enabled me to buy some really great resources for our school. Um, resources like positive parenting cards when I have chats with parents, um, Two Worlds, which is a card resource which helps me talk to kids about separation and uh, parents' divorce. Uh, and then things like optimism booster cards in conversations with kids so I can help push those questions about is the situation really as they're seeing it and what might they be able to do about it. Um, even today, I was able to use uh, the strengths cards, which I got from St. Luke's Innovative Resources from funds from your school, the Church Council, to help kids think about what are some of their strengths? And so we played a game where I laid out nine different strengths cards on the table. And as I rolled the dice, um, if it landed on an odd number, they had to give a strength of their own. And if it landed on an even number, they had to give a strength of someone else in the room. And it was really encouraging. Things like, I care about others, I help others, I'm brave, I'm honest, or even I like to play. It was a great game to play with a group of kids who are struggling with self-esteem, none of which would be possible without your guys' support. I'd love you guys to keep praying for me and for the school as I keep working here. Obviously, COVID is a tricky time with lots of different mixed feelings. So prayer for our community that we would keep pulling together. Prayer for me uh, as... I work in this space that God would help me to have the right conversations with people, that um, he would help me to be building really good relationships um, 
with staff and community members, even though some of the things I normally do wouldn't happen. Uh, that would be great. I can't wait to see you guys again in person. Uh, I hope that will be soon. But I just wanted you to know you're still making a giant impact through all of these resources and more uh, and through your prayer to me. I feel so encouraged by your church community. Thanks, guys, and uh, have a really good week. Thanks. Bye. Well, hello, you lot. It's birthday time again. This month of July is the, the month in progress and there are some wonderful people on our list of birthday honours this month. We start with Michael and then Emily and, and Tessa, two lovely young ladies. Wayne, all the best for your birthday, Wayne. Alicia, keep those bottle tops coming, Alicia. I've got a bag full of them. Jerry, Meredith, hi, Meredith. Chris, this is the last of your 60s this year, Chris. Pam, Connor, Stuart, Pip, Brent, Wills, Brent and Jemima. Hello, Jemima. Patty, Natalie and Kayla. All the best to all of you for your birthdays this month. Happy birthday to you. Jesus bless you, may he find you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. G'day, I'm Colin. I wonder if you know what are some big things, big things. I was looking outside before, there were big trees. Maybe you can see some big buildings. What else? Um, what's that? River. Big river. And rivers flow down to the, the sea. And the sea is big. Hmm. I wonder who is big? There are some big people, but I, I can think of a song and maybe you can too. My God is so big. That's your bit. So strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. The mountains are his. The valleys are his stuff. The stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, <laughs> so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. It's true, you know. Now, I was thinking there are some other things that are big. Things that you can't see. Things like sickness hmm, and sadness badness and sin. They're big too, aren't they? But you can't see them. So you know that God is bigger than those things. He's bigger than the trees and bigger than the buildings, bigger than the rivers and the seas. And God is bigger than sickness and sadness and worry and badness. In fact, God made the world and God has the whole world in his hands. There's a song about that, but there's a Bible verse about that too. It's what the Bible teaches us. The Bible's God's word. Yes. It's in Psalm 95. For the Lord is the great God, the high king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. God has got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Ready? Mummies first. He's got all of the mummies. Mummies go, yay. In his hands, he's got all of the daddies. Yay! 
In his hands, he's got all of the children. Ready? Yay! In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got all of the grandmas. Yay! In his hands, he's got all of the grandpas. What? What? Is it, is it still on? In his hands, he's got ready babies. Go goo. He's got all of the babies. Goo. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He does, you know, God has the whole world in his hands and God has a good plan. And his good plan is to bring all things together under his son, Jesus. And there's a verse from the Bible about that too. Now I'll put my little bookmark in here so I would find my spot. It's in the book of Colossians. And it says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus and through Jesus to bring all things together, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood on the cross. What a good plan to set all things right under Jesus. In fact, I changed the first song a little. And this is how it goes. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. For Jesus is mighty to save. Ready? It's going to be loud. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. It is true. You know what we should do? I'm going to pray now. Will you pray with me? Prayer is talking to God, by the way. All right. I'm going to close my eyes so I can think about talking to God. My Lord and my God, you are so big. You made the world and you take care of the world and you take care of everyone and everything in the world. And you have a plan, even though we don't always know it or see it. But we know that you've told us you will bring all things together under Jesus, that you will bring life to all who trust in him. So be with us, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> Well, thanks to Colin and Compassion for that powerful reminder. God really is good and he loves us. Sometimes we can lose perspective to that. So we need to invite him to again be our vision and our shield and our protector. And that's exactly what this next song does. Let's invite him to be our vision today. Day or 
morning everyone. Reverend Craig Bailey will be speaking to us this morning about faith, focusing on Hebrews chapter 11, which names many heroes of faith from the Old Testament, people who were amazing examples of trusting God, even in dire circumstances and when they couldn't see what lay ahead. Faith is defined as trust, as relying on God because of what he has already done, despite our doubts and fears. Faith is all about being certain of what we do not yet see. As we pray together this morning, let's put our faith, our trust in our faithful God, believing he loves us and wants to bless us. Let us bow our heads and pray. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for our opportunity to worship together this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness to generations past, and we praise you for your never-failing faithfulness to us. We thank you, Father, for the answers to prayer in our own individual circumstances this week. Forgive our unbelief during the times when we have doubted you. Please help our faith to grow as we trust in you and to praise you in all circumstances. We know you love to inhabit the praises of your people, Father. We praise you, God, for the good results of Betty Ward's recent scan for successful surgery to remove a tumour from five-year-old Samuel, Valtrim's grandson, for Rosalie Lewis's dad's steady recovery from a heart attack, for the answers to prayer for Christine Pierce's friend Raylene, who has been given new hope after good results from cancer tests. And we praise God for all the blessings and mercies he showers on us fresh every morning, including being virus-free here in our state. Help us each day to look for things to say thank you for, even when we are in the middle of tough times. Thank you, Father, for Rachel Stevens, the Echunga Primary School pastoral care worker, and the wonderful work she's doing with children in our local school, for the contact she is making and the message of God's love that she is expressing through all that she does. We pray together today for ongoing healing and pain relief for little Samuel, for Betty Ward, for John Pitchford, for Rosalie Lewis's dad, for Raylene and for others we know of who are in need of a healing touch from our loving Heavenly Father. We pray also for God's peace and awareness of his presence for these dear folk and their families. We pray for your peace and comfort for those grieving the loss of a loved one. And we especially pray for Brian Cogan and for Marge Hammond. We pray for work opportunities for those seeking work and for help for those in financial difficulties. We pray for those with depression and mental health needs, those who are lonely and alone. May they receive practical help in their individual situations and know that you love them dearly. We pray for so many all over the world who are suffering with the effects of coronavirus and especially for those who have lost loved ones due to this disease. Please give wisdom, skill and expertise to those who are working to create a vaccine. We pray for countries where there is hatred, fear and lawlessness, where the colour of a person's skin causes discrimination and sometimes violence. Father, we ask for your love and forgiveness to touch the lives in miraculous ways of so many who need it. And we pray for Matt and Beck Karat and their family as they head off today for a week's holiday. We praise you for Matt's ministry among us and for his wisdom, passion and joy as he shares your message of love in Achunga, the Adelaide Hills and beyond. We pray for a great time of relaxation and refreshment for the whole family. And we pray for Craig Bailey as he speaks to us shortly and we ask a blessing on us all in the week ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our beautiful little church in Achunga. It's lovely to be here. Our reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 11, and it opens with this wonderful verse that says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now reading on from verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, 
like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him, him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello to my friends at Ichunga Uniting Church. It's a real privilege to be with you today, and thanks, Matt, for asking me to share this message, which is basically a message on faithfulness. You know, about 12 months ago, I was in Vancouver, British Columbia, a place called Whistler, a kind of an, an adrenaline town. And my brother-in-law, Kim and I, were taken up to a high mountain and um, we ziplined at a time speeds nearly, nearly nearing 100 kilometres per hour and as high as, uh, higher than a 20 storey building looking down on the landscape, just zipping down this line. And it was amazing. But as I was going down, I, I had a choice to make. I could either kind of resist, and there was, were ways of slowing down, resist and be fearful, shut my eyes and hope for the best. Or I could trust that line, there's only, it's only a narrow line, hold on and just go with it. I chose the latter and I experienced um, momentum, the thrill of, of momentum. Surfers understand this when they catch a wave, they can't create or manipulate the wave. They just catch it, they trust it, they hold on and they go with it. We read today from Hebrews chapter 11 and Hebrews chapter 11 is kind of a hall of fame for biblical champions. Champions like Noah, like Rahab, like Moses. And, you know, these were ordinary people who did extraordinary things because they trusted God, they held on, and they just went with him. We live in challenging times, really challenging times. And in the midst of these times, we are called to be faithful. You know, the hero of heroes in that Hall of Fame was probably Abraham. God comes to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and calls him. He says to Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Abraham was probably quite overwhelmed by this. But he's a lesson in trust. He trusted God. He held on and he went with what God was calling him to do despite all kinds of challenges. Let's look at some of those. In verse 8 of Hebrews 11, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as his, as his inheritance. He obeyed. Abraham obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. I mean, understand this. God comes to Abraham. He's 75 years old. He lives in a city of Ur, which was a wealthy city. It's a time of his life when he's looking at retirement. And God says, I want to pack up your things. Pack up all that you have, you and Sarah, and I want you to move. Now, you wouldn't blame Abraham for saying, well, God, you know, where to? Do you know what it says there? 
it says he went without even knowing where he was going. You ever felt like that? Maybe you feel like it now. Faithfulness is trusting God even when you don't know where you're going. It's as though God shows us some part of it, but we have to trust him with the rest. You know, there's a little antelope called an impala. And that antelope is one meter high. It can leap three meters high, but when, sadly, its captives uh, captured it and put it into an enclosure, they only ever had to make the enclosure two meters high. The reason why is that despite the fact that the little impala could easily leap over a two meter fence, it would never do so because it always had to see where it was leaping to. It just wouldn't do it. It's stay in captivity. Aren't we like that sometimes? Sometimes we get all conservative and, and, look, and, and, and lock ourselves in because, well, we don't know quite where God is taking us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Walk by faith, not by sight. There are times when God calls us and we don't know exactly where he's calling us to. Look at the next bit. Verse 9. By faith he made his home in the promised land, but he was like a stranger in a foreign country. It wasn't quite what he had in mind. He lived, Abraham lived in tents, as, is, as did Isaac and Jacob after him. Now, understand, God has promised him an inheritance. And suddenly, Abraham finds himself living in a tent. And he lived in that tent. He didn't, the Israelites didn't receive their inheritance until three generations had passed. And it, was, it would be a hundred years before that they would transition out of tents. They must have asked, where, Lord? When is this inheritance going to happen? When is the end coming? You ever felt like that? Maybe you feel it now. When is this thing going to end? When is this coronavirus season going to end? Do you know what? Faithfulness is trusting God, even when you don't know where. It's trusting him when you don't know where, and it's trusting when you don't know when. You might be right now saying, when am I going to get that job? When is that relationship going to happen? When is God going to answer my prayer? I take great comfort from Psalm 37. Verse 7, it says, wait patiently for the Lord to act. Wait patiently. He will act. Faithfulness is trusting God, holding on and going with him when you don't know where. When you don't know when. And thirdly, look at verse 11. Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered God faithful who'd made that promise. God had come to Abraham and Sarah. By now, Abraham around 99, Sarah around 90 years of age, and says, you're going to have a child. They never had kids. They thought it was so impossible that they laughed. They thought it was a joke. And in fact, of course, ultimately, Isaac was born. And they named him Isaac because Isaac means laughter. You ever had a time in your life when you thought, how can this happen? 
They must have asked. I, Abraham and, uh, and Sarah must have said, well, how can this happen? What do you mean? That's impossible. You ever wondered that? You ever thought it would take a miracle? How could this ever happen? How will I ever be healed? How will I ever come to the end of this? How will this problem ever be solved? You know what? Faithfulness is trusting God, even when you don't know how. And fourthly, and the sort of coup de grace of this story in Hebrews 11, of Abraham, the champion of champions. It says, by faith, in verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. God had come to Abraham and said to Abraham, I'm going to test you. I want you to take your son, Isaac. Isaac, by this time, would have been an adult. And I want you to go with him and I want you to put him on the altar and sacrifice him. I find this passage really difficult for multiple reasons. But I do understand the point that is being made. It made no sense. Why would God ask Abraham to do that? Abraham himself must have thought to himself, why is this happening? Have you ever asked that question? Why is this happening? Why me? Why God? I wonder whether Jesus had moments, perhaps many of them, where he asked the same question. We know that in the Garden of Gethsemane, he knelt and he prayed and he struggled with what was about to happen. I mean, he was about to die as the only son, a sacrifice for his father. And we do know that he prayed earnestly, Lord, take this cup away from me. But I'm sure he must have said, why? Why me? Why now? And I believe that many of us have had moments in our lives, if not even right now, asking the same question. Faithfulness is trusting God when you don't know where, when you don't know when, when you don't know how, and when you don't know why? It's amazing what happens when God tests us. I don't think he inflicts things on us, but I do believe that in difficult situations that, 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 that there are testing things that go for, on for us as disciples and followers of Christ. James chapter 1 verse 3 says, When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So even out of difficult situations, God uses those to grow us into the kind of people he wants us to be. And that's what he was doing with Abraham. And that's what he did in all those years through the nation of Israel. But you know, as I think on these things, this is not absolutely about our faith or ultimately about our faithfulness. See, when I look at this and I look at these champions of faith and how God turned ordinary people into people who did all extraordinary things, I often think about how often I failed in my faithfulness to God. But this isn't about faithfulness, our faithfulness. It's about God's faithfulness. Because God was faithful to Abraham. He was faithful to Sarah and ultimately to Isaac. He's faithful to us. There's a wonderful verse in the New Testament which says, God is faithful and he will do it. You may be in a really challenging situation right now. 
It might be a relational challenge. And you're asking how or when is this ever going to be resolved? It might be a work challenge or a lack of work challenge. It might be a church challenge. I belong in the part of the leadership of a small church plant. And we have no home, particularly. We have no church or place. And in the midst of this season, when we're so new, we're really only just started, we're asking a lot of questions about where we're going, and how we're going to get there, and why now? But God is faithful. And I want to encourage you today to pray for faithfulness. You know, I want to finish with Mark 9. A man comes to Jesus and he says he's got a son who is ill, is manifesting all kinds of bad things and he's at the end of his tether. And he comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, can you do something? And Jesus looks with compassion on him and says, can I? He says, all things are possible to those who believe. And it's the next bit that I'm interested in here. This is what I'm after. The, the father, the man says, Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. Have you ever thought that? Lord, I believe. You know that you are who you say you are. I believe you're the son of God. I believe that Jesus existed, that Jesus rose from the dead. Help me in my unbelief. It seems, seems like a contradiction, but really it's saying I believe. And yet I struggle to really put my faith and trust in you. Can I invite you to do that this morning? as we pray together. Let's come before God and let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us. Come to us. Fill us with your spirit of love and grace at this moment, I pray. Lord, I pray for each person who's watching this right now. You know, no matter, matter what circumstances you're in, I pray that you would sense the presence of God, the confidence of God, the faith that God, by his gift of grace, gives to you. That right now, you might not just believe in God, but that you would be able to place your trust in in God. Lord, help us to be people of faithfulness. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Thanks to Craig for that message. It starts in God's faithfulness. He is faithful. So let's be reminded of that in this next song. God is faithful in and through his promises. Yes and amen.
Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but sing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and your promises. May we be people of faith who live that faith out. As we give our lives to you today and this week, in our conversations, in our actions and interactions, be glorified through us as we step out in faith. For the money that we've given today and through this week in different ways, we pray that you would stretch us and you would use that money for your glory as it's spent here and beyond here. Bring light to the darkness. We thank you, God, that you are with us. You never leave us. And for the call to step forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. As you go this week into another week to seek and to serve him, go as an act of worship with our faithful God with you. God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are with you every step of the way. Amen.